I came, I saw, I copied. Why DEI must die. If you're not a close follower of American college campus politics, you are likely to be unfamiliar with a woman who has been making headlines for over a month in the US and increasingly around the world. The lady in question, one Claudine Gay, was president of Harvard, one of the most renowned educational institutions in the world, until she resigned earlier this month over plagiarism allegations. Why does or should anyone care about this? Well, Gay's decisions to step down is the culmination of long-running efforts to address the cancer at the heart of Western societies. The idea that the way to fix injustices of the past is to commit injustices today. Following her resignation, Gay's defenders were quick to emphasize the racial dimension of the story. Ibrahim X. Kendi, for example, tweeted that racist mobs won't stop until they topple all black people from positions of power and influence who are not reinforcing the structure of racism. And while his claims of this being a racist campaign are absurd, it is true that Gay was not targeted solely for seemingly adopting the personal motto of I came, I saw, I copied. She became a focus of major Harvard donor concerns and a media campaign led by Christopher Rufo, a man I would approvingly describe as the diversity industry's greatest enemy, in the light of her mind-boggling testimony in Congress. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. What's the context? Targeted as an individual. Targeted as, at an individual. It's yeah, targeted at Jewish that. students, Jewish individuals. Again, it depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. These are unacceptable answers across the board. Her statements, given alongside the presidents of MIT and UPenn, reveal the core of the ideology the entire Western education system is based on in all its glory. The oppressor versus oppressed mindset, which, no matter how uncomfortable this may make some viewers, is cultural Marxism, says simply that white people and overperforming minorities like Indians, Jews, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean Americans should be discriminated against in hiring and student applications in favor of underprivileged groups. As a result, college campuses on which regular meltdowns have occurred for over a decade over such hate speech as dressing in a Mexican costume for Halloween found themselves with nothing to say about pro-Hamas demonstrations and the harassment of Jewish students on their campuses in the wake of the October 7th attacks. But even that is not painting the full picture. Yes, Gay, a darling of the diversity industry, was targeted for her plagiarism following her complete failure of leadership in recent months. But she was also partially targeted because of the assumption, if not outright conclusion, that the reason she was appointed in the first place was, to put it mildly, not merit alone. After all, Gay's primary achievement is not stellar academic work, exemplary managerial skills, or even charisma and force of personality. She was appointed president of Harvard following a distinguished career in fields like improving diversity and researching race and identity. To put it bluntly, many people believe that she is a diversity hire, and the reason she pushed the DEI ideology that eventually led to her appalling testimony in Congress is that she is herself a beneficiary of it. To be clear, she has not been forced out for being black. She has been forced out for being placed in a position for which she had neither the skills nor the experience to succeed, and then failing in it. This is the rotten legacy of affirmative action, which as Thomas Sowell explained decades ago and in many of his books since, hurts the very people it is attempting to help. Now, you, do you believe that mandatory proportional representation benefits minorities? No, in fact, I think one of the great handicaps that uh, blacks and other minorities face across the country is that they are systematically mismatched with universities in the admissions process. That is, if, if Harvard feels that it must have X percent of blacks, and if the pool is such that they can't get X percent of blacks at the same level as the rest of the Harvard students, they're going to take those blacks who would have succeeded in some state university and bring them to Harvard, where many of them will fail. Something like one fourth of all the black students going to MIT do not graduate. You're talking about a pool of people who scored the 90th percentile in math, whom you are artificially turning into failures by mismatching them with the school. If allowing students to enter universities in which they're destined to fail for the sake of diversity harms them, 
then what might be said about hiring people for leadership roles in major institutions in which they're destined to fail? This harms not only them, but also the people who work and study at those institutions. I have no evidence that Claudine Gay was hired ahead of better, more qualified candidates. But it is not hard to imagine that a position holding the prestige, reputation and nearly million dollar a year salary, the role of Harvard president commands, could have been filled by someone with more executive experience, academic achievements and other relevant expertise. This is the other great curse of the counterproductive attempts to artificially increase the presence of so-called underrepresented groups in employment and education. Because everyone knows that some people are regularly given unfair preferential treatment, it becomes easier and easier for the rest of us to suspect specific individuals of being there for reasons other than merit. So here's the truth. We must return to pursuing the goal of a colorblind society immediately. There is no such thing as positive discrimination. All discrimination is wrong. And because it is wrong, it will create precisely the kind of resentment that Claudine Gay is now facing. She's seen as the standard bearer of the DEI industry and is being treated as such by people who've had enough. All of us must be treated on the content of our character. When we refuse to follow this principle, we hurt everyone, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, Jewish. A healthy society relies on the equal treatment of all individuals. The fact that we have to say this out loud in 2024 is a sign of how far we've fallen. DEI must be dismantled. This will take years, perhaps decades, but in recent weeks, for the first time in a long time, we have grounds for optimism. Before you go, let me take a minute to recommend a longevity supplement by Verso. In our recent interview with Tim Urban, he said, We should be talking about longevity and longevity science. Researchers like the biologist David Sinclair have recently made some fascinating discoveries on how to mitigate or even slow down aging altogether. And that's why I'm using Verso. Verso is a company that translates these incredible scientific breakthroughs into products that hold the potential to increase your longevity. And one of their products that I take every day is Cell Being. Cell Being helps combat aging by increasing something called NAD plus in your body. Now, NAD is arguably the most important molecule in your body. High NAD levels improve your metabolism, repair damaged DNA, and increase energy production in your brain, immune system, and muscles. But as you grow old, your body's NAD levels go down and you can't take NAD as a supplement because it's too big for your cells to absorb. That's why Verso Cell Being contains NMN, resveratrol, and TMG. These three molecules work together to increase NAD plus levels. If you want to read more about this, check out the scientific research linked in the description of this video. Plus, Verso publishes third-party testing on every batch of its product to guarantee that you're getting exactly what you're paying for. So, if you want to join me, you can get 15% off by going to ver.so, that's ver.so, and use our code TRIGGER to save 15% off your order. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this one where I explain to Glenn Beck why diversity is not a strength.